Welcome everyone to the Summer um, of Legal and Professional Skills. My name is Jackie Jones and I will be delivering a number of the lectures in this subject for summer. Your coordinator is Daniel Tirado. Daniel's details are um, on the subject outline which is posted on UTS Online. Daniel will be your first point of contact if you have any queries or concerns in relation to the subject. So lecture one is actually broken into three components and you'll see there on slide three there's going to be three short lecture uh, recordings for lecture one. First one will be introduction and assessments and that's what I'm going to be dealing with now. The second recording will be about practical legal training and admission as a legal practitioner and the third component or module in Lecture 1 will be the focus and expectations that are on you um, as new lawyers. So just as a general information basis, um, the, your learning is going to be in an off-campus mode. It's very important for communication that you read the announcements that are going to be posted on UTS online on a regular basis. Please note that you are required to use your UTS email when you are communicating with Daniel or anyone um, else in the teaching capacity in this subject and in fact for any of your subjects with UTS. This has a practical um, requirement as well as one that, of university guidelines and that is it does often, personal emails do often get placed into the junk mail and therefore your communication goes unnoticed. So please just make, mark that, that you do need to use your UTS, UTS email. Um, you're going to, as I said, have learning in two modes. One is going to be online activities. Now to do the online activities, you are going to be placed in online groups. You will work together, collaborate to complete tasks that are posted online and Daniel will be providing feedback to your group on your uh, completed worksheet for the task. We also have a face-to-face -face workshop um, that's going to be on the 5th of January 2016 in the new year. It's a big day, it's from 9am to 4pm. On that day two modules are going to um, be the focus of the learning. The first is negotiation and the second is client interviewing. My experience of students um, is that they really enjoy the face-to-face -face workshop. It's a full day, but it's one where um, it assists not only with your learning, but also in your negotiation tasks. So it's always important that you become familiar with UTS online. This is a subject, unlike maybe some core or elective, where there is a lot of material that is placed on UTS online. For example, there's a learning and reading guide this is essential for um, material for your assessments and also just general knowledge and the workshop material tasks. There um, is an assessment folder that is going to contain the three assessments that you will be required to undertake in this subject and I'm going to talk about that in some detail. So with regard to your online um, activities, the, um, they really have a fundamental platform because not only do they build your skills but they assess, assist you with your assessment tasks and in fact assessment too is part component of general participation so your whole learning is linked to not only your online tasks with fellow students but the face-to-face -face workshop. There is an e-reading um, link through the Library for the College of Law Papers and a lot of material has also been placed online for the various topics. Now on rega with regard to topics, if you go to slide 7 you'll see that there's a, a sort of an eclectic group of topics for this subject. Um, again, unlike core or elective which has a matter specific um, learning output and learning subject, here in this subject, Legal and Professional Skills, we touch on a whole range of um, topics. They're all required competencies 
um, by the Legal Profession Admission Board and I'm going to talk about that in the Module, module 2 lecture. So you can see there that we're going to have um, some learning on resilience, communication, drafting in plain language, which most lawyers struggle with, challenges and opportunities for young lawyers, of course trust accounting, which um, is a requirement by the LPA. But what outcomes are we expecting for you? Well, they're outlined on slide eight. You'll see there um, one of the learning outcomes is for you to have a perspective of core skills and the core values of a lawyer. What actually is the relevance of ethics in everyday practice? So I am a legal practitioner. I have been admitted and been practicing as a lawyer for in excess of 30 years. I can't tell you um, how important ethics is as part of your day-to-day -day life as a lawyer. Ethics and your learning on core skills, core values, um, is not a tick subject that you do once and you have no other association with. And there are some subjects in your law degree that you may not touch on again um, in your professional working life. Ethics isn't one of those. And it is very important for you to have an understanding of how it is an integral part of actually being an effective legal practitioner. So slide nine, big message for you all to keep calm and to stay organised. There is good news, that is that you don't have an exam in this subject. But there are three assessment tasks and the assessment tasks are very different to elective and core uh, subject assessment tasks that you may have encountered. Practical legal training or PLT is very different from core and elective learning. So I like to think of it as the transition from knowing the law to then being able to apply the law in practical scenarios. It's important for you to plan your workload across all the subjects. Um, I certainly would recommend that you uh, sit down and identify due dates. Uh, they'll all be identified in the subject outline of the various subjects that you will be doing and timetable them. Whether that's in a written format or an elect electronic format, whatever works for you. But managing your time is a crucial aspect of whatever profession you go into. And so take this learning opportunity because there may be many of you who are not just doing one subject but are doing a number of subjects over summer. It is a short period of time and you have learning in a very intense period and you really do need to manage uh, the workload so that uh, you yourself um, stay um, healthy and it doesn't impact you in an adverse way. Right. So going back to slide 10, that will happen on the 9th of January. Um, I'm going to be giving more detailed information about the client interview and the structure, um, how it works and formatting for you in the interview lecture, so please listen to that. But from an assessment point of view, client interview on the 9th of January, you need to allocate one hour, um, half an hour for you as a solicitor, half an hour for you when you act as a client for your fellow solicitor, fellow student I should say. Following the client interview, you are then required to do a letter to the client and that due date is 5pm on the 15th of January. That letter um, is to reflect the client interview. Again, it is not a letter that we want you to go away, research and to provide legal advice to the client. We're looking for you to be able to capture in a letter the instructions that you obtained, the conversation with the client, that can then be sent off to the client. Your second assessment task has two components. Um, to uh, slide 12, um, it shows that there is negotiation reflection and also general participation. Now it is um, a percentage mark that is not broken um, into a percentage for the negotiation or a percentage for general participation. Important for you to note that general participation relates to 
the online group tasks which are monitored by Daniel as well as your involvement in the face-to-face -face workshop on the 5th of January. So it is a holistic view that we are looking at for general participation. Students who don't participate in the online task but turn up um, engage in the face-to-face -face workshop are not going to receive a high mark because it is one that is looking at participation across the whole of the subject. Negotiation reflection. Um, what's going to happen here is that you as students are going to be involved in a simulated negotiation exercise in the face-to-face -face workshop on the 5th of January. More detail about that is going to be um, provided in the negotiation lecture. After the um, workshop on the 5th of January, you're going to post reflective comments in what's called SPARK. Um, and that's a self and peer assessment review module, which is online, enabling you to go in um, and be able to provide feedback to your fellow team members for the negotiation, as well as providing a ranking for yourself and the team. So again, more detail um, will be provided online for you about that. This just gives you a snapshot as to what you will be provided with for Assessment 3 is a fact scenario. You are required to consider that fact scenario and then transport yourself as if you were in fact in, in that scenario and you were recording a file note as to what happened in that meeting with the client. Um, the, your learning um, throughout this subject will assist you in being able to address this point. A file note itself is no special or um, specific document that you need to hunt down. What a file note is, is a recording of what has happened. So if you take yourself back and you think if you go to a doctor, you sit there in a doctor's surgery and you tell them how you're feeling, that some doctors write automatically into their computer as a recording of that, others handwrite notes. Same if you go to a physiotherapist or some other he health professional, they will take notes. That is what a file note is in legal practice. It is taking uh, a recording, it is highlighting information in a written format from a risk management tool exercise. There is a file note as in a template of what um, information is required that is in the learning and reading guide and also in material online. I have file notes written in some of my files that might be on the back of a, an envelope because that's the only material that I've been able to grab when I've been having a telephone conversation with someone. It might be a text message that I've received from a client that I then um, email to myself and print it out and put it on the file and that's a recording of the text that I've received from a client. It might be an actual letter that I write. It might be the notes of a conference. It might be the handwritten notes of a court appearance. Whatever it might be, it needs to provide certain information, namely the type of um, attendance it is. Is it a telephone attendance? Is it at court? Is it in conference? And if it's a conference, who's it conference with? When did the conference start? When did the telephone attendance start? When did it conclude? Those time periods are very important from a risk management point of view and from a cost perspective. Um, there is a, a an assessment feedback sheet that you need to be mindful of. There's an engagement management checklist which is part of the assessment feedback sheet criteria that you will identify. That is actually found in the learning and reading guide, that engagement management checklist. I can't begin to tell you the number of students who do not look at that, notwithstanding it is part of the criteria for this assessment task. So what the whole aim of this assessment is, is really about identifying concerns that you have about the matter. Inevitably, there are going to be more questions asked than answered. This isn't about solving a problem. It's really about identifying issues and concerns that you might have you, from meeting with a client. And importantly, what do you need as the lawyer to, to have addressed to meet those concerns? What's your strategy for the matter? And I think the best way that I can um, give you some guidance on this assessment task is think of it this way. What would happen if someone picked up your file? 
what are they going to be able to gather from your um, file note? Do they have an understanding of your concern? Do they know what it's about? Um, do they know what your strategy is because you've identified it in your file note? Um, Janice Purvis, who is the practice manager for education at Law Cover, um, speaks to UTS students and her lecture will be online and it is worthwhile listening to Janice's lecture because she tells of the importance of file notes and how from an insurance point of view claims that are um, sought to be made against lawyers can often um, be put to rest, nothing further happen um, if the file is kept in a way that law cover is able to say, well, here's the advice that the solicitor gave. Here's a file note that says the solicitor discussed X, Y and Z with the client. Here's the written instructions from the client following the um, conversation with the lawyer. So it is all about risk management in many respects. aspect of it and being the accounting obligations. Um, you, you will have a lecture on trust accounting. Daniel is going to give that lecture to you. And the uh, purpose of the accounting aspect of this assessment task is for you to demonstrate an understanding of the regulations and the fiduciary obligations of lawyers when managing a client's money. Remember, it's not your money, it's the client's money. So we as lawyers are um, restrained and contained with a whole a gambit of legislation as to how we deal with somebody else's money and that's all part of the competency under the admission rules that you must satisfy to be admitted as well. Finally for this lecture the discussion board. There is a discussion board on UTS online this is going to be monitored by Daniel and when you go into that discussion board you'll see there's a forum for each assessment task. I know it's tempting to send to um, your tutor from the face-to-face work, -face workshop in January or to Daniel Direct asking a question. Students often feel, oh, you know, this is a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question and what you will find inevitably is that there is going to be some student out there who has a like question to you. And so the purpose of the discussion board is that all students get the benefit of the question and the answer. So please um, make sure that you um, uh, use that discussion board for any questions that you have about the assessment tasks. And that's the end of the first module for Lecture 1. Thank you.